Welcome back to AMN. I am your host RJ West and today I am here for a new series called Insight to Poor Management where I go over a team that has or had poor management and ruined a chance at a championship or two. But at the end of the video I will show you a potential team that could have been formed if management made a couple of different decisions. You're welcome to skip to that portion if you already know how the Packers have wasted Aaron Rodgers' prime. It doesn't matter to me what you do as long as you watch a second of my video. I don't care. So when we start off in the 2010 season, I'm not really going to go over that or fault them for anything because they won the Super Bowl and they went 10-6. and six. So I'm not really going to go over that point or before that. But I will go over the aftermath of the Super Bowl season because that is very important in this scenario. Let's only keep four guys that are free agents and not pick up anybody else to stay good. Not picking up big names in free agency is fine as long as you have a good draft. So let's take a look at their draft. First round pick is an athletic offensive tackle with average strength. Even though they already have young guys on the offensive line and see that as a solid group on their team and could use some depth on let's say the other side of the trenches since they lost Colin Jenkins to the Eagles in the secondary since Charles Woodson isn't getting any younger, or even some depth at the interior linebacker position since AJ Hawk will need to be replaced over time. So let's look at who they could have had. Cornerback turned into free safety Aaron Williams, edge rusher Jabal Sheard, linebacker Akeem Ayers, linebacker Bruce Carter, defensive lineman Jarvis Jenkins, or edge rusher Brooks Reed. But hey, it's one round, they can't possibly screw this thing up, right? Well, second round pick is Randall Cobb. I'll give them a pass since he turned into a pro bowler and neither Greg Jennings nor Donald Driver were players getting any younger, but for what it's worth, they could have had Justin Houston, DeMarco Murray, or Jarrell Casey. Third round pick. Let's draft a young running back even though we already have one of those in James Starks, even though there will be guys like Jaquiz Rogers and Deion Lewis available in the later rounds if we really feel like taking a running back, even though we still have players on the board like KJ Wright, Denora Searcy, and Sam Ocho. But no, let's draft the scat back from Hawaii because he's just like all the other backs that we have and we just won the Super Bowl. Everything else is stuff that I can't really fault them for since it's hard to find steals in the 7th or 6th or even 5th rounds of the draft. And so let's go to the next season. The Packers take advantage of the fact that they play a second place schedule while the Bears play a first place schedule and go 15-1 and with the emergence of Jordy Nelson and Joe Philbin getting some excellent production out of this offense. Surely they're going to repeat as Super Bowl champions, right? Well, facing a relatively easy schedule and owning the NFC North really was the deciding factor of their 15-1 season. They then faced the New York Giants in the divisional round after getting a first round bye. This should be an easy put out. They're at home facing a Giants team that barely made the playoffs against a quarterback that relies on his very good receiving targets to shade his poor decision making. Well, there's one problem. The supporting cast doesn't support, and the subpar defensive coordinator plays too soft of coverage to stop anyone. But hey, it's just one season, can't win them all. As long as you have a good offseason, you'll be fine to be back in contention once more. Another year of Packers free agency, and another year of two quiet moves to make a difference. Well, they did pick up a good offensive lineman in Jeff Saturday to replace Scott Wells. Still though, you're going to have to pick up some good players in the draft. First round pick is edge rusher Nick Perry, a guy who didn't fit their scheme at first but turned into someone pretty good. For whatever it's worth, they could have had Harrison Smith, Doug Martin, Courtney Upshaw, or Derek Wolf. Second round pick. Let's draft another guy with upside that isn't a great fit in our scheme and also has a questionable work ethic even though there are still guys on the board like Zach Brown, Levante David, and Vinny Curry. The Packers waited too long to draft the linebacker in the 5th round when they could have drafted a linebacker with their first second pick instead of addressing the trenches on defense in which they did that well with drafting Mike Daniels in the 4th round. The Packers did hit home with their second second round pick in Casey Hayward but they still could have done better with this draft as a whole. Even though the Packers had yet another average at best offseason, they still have the most talented quarterback of all time. That will automatically give them the edge over every other NFL team. So let's see how the season went. You have a new offensive coordinator that gets carried by Aaron Rodgers and you still have trouble containing quality offenses. And you face some more difficult schedule compared to last season and drop 4 more games as the 49ers barely edge out the final first round bye spot. Remember that team. Packers defeat the Vikings in the wildcard round as the Vikings were exposed to an actual playoff atmosphere. Surely the Packers will keep this momentum going up against their former rival 49ers, right? 
Well, not exactly, considering that the Packers now face an actual quarterback that also is a dual threat, and they lay a giant egg in San Francisco with that defense being exposed in the playoffs once more. So now we should be thinking that the Packers will make some moves this offseason considering that they had another disappointing season. You still don't make any notable acquisitions, and you lost four key players on your defense? Well, maybe Ted Thompson will surprise us with his drafting this time. Just maybe. Even though we need some linebacker help, some defensive line help, some cornerback help, or even some help at wide receiver, let's draft another edge rusher with so-called upside that doesn't fit our scheme. In terms of guys that they could have had, there were random players on the board like DeAndre Hopkins, Sylvester Williams, Alec Ogletree, and Darius Slay. In terms of their second round selection, they could use a power back, so they drafted a power back, so I'll give them a pass. I'll give them a pass for the rest of their draft as well since they stole Micah Hyde in the fifth round, but they still were unable to use their first round pick wisely and missed out on some talent. So let's see how it turns out on the field. The Packers lose Aaron Rodgers midway through the season and get exposed for who they really are as a team and are about the midst of playoffs until Aaron Rodgers comes in at the right time and they beat the Bears in the final game to win the weak NFC North. How lucky. And so now you're in the playoffs and you still can't make it to the NFC Championship game and once again you lose to the 49ers. This has to trigger some big moves in this upcoming offseason. You lose a couple of key offensive linemen, a few defensive players, and James Jones. But do you replace them effectively? Of course not. Well they did sign Julius Pepper that actually turned out to be a good signing. Do they sign anybody else new? What do you think? Oh wow, you finally hit home on a first round selection with HaHa ha Clinton Dix, and he's the only really good prospect that you pick up. Your second round selection, a guy that only had one good season. Your third round selections, a defensive lineman that doesn't fit your scheme and wears out late in games, and a project tight end that will at least provide you some needed depth at that position. The only other good selection that you had was Corey Lindsley. Everything else was average at best. So let's see who you missed out on. It's time for another year of wasting Aaron Rodgers' career and exiting before the third round of the playoffs. But wait, they actually made it to the NFC Championship game and have a 16 point lead going into the second half. But they blow it with Mike McCarthy's lack of game planning against Pete Carroll and both coordinators running conservative plays towards the ends of the game. Why am I not surprised by this? You lose three key defensive players, your backup QB, and some wide receiver depth. You already know what happens next. Another misused first round selection where they could have had Landon Collins? What a surprise. Oh, and in the second round they pick up another poor secondary player replacer where they could have had Frank Clark or Jalen Strong. Ladies and gentlemen, there is Ted Thompson for you once more. <sighs> Just another Packers season that this time gets exposed to the fact that there's an actual challenger in the NFC North and oh yeah, they steal the division. That challenger was the legacy failure Minnesota Vikings. And yeah, you still can't make it to the Super Bowl as Aaron Rodgers carries his subpar coaching staff and supporting cast to an overtime loss in the divisional round against yet another NFC West team. All that's left is for the Rams to beat them in a playoff game. Do I even need to report on what happened this year? Let's draft more players that don't fit our scheme very well and only pull out one or two players that are actually good and not enough players to hide the fact that we are too conservative to make a difference in free agency. And at the same time, let's miss out on guys like Deion Jones, Sua Cravens, Mackenzie Alexander, Justin Simmons, and Tyreek Hill. The Packers make the NFC Championship game again after facing a relatively easy playoff schedule and get served up by the Falcons. Who knew that letting all of your key players walk in free agency and not replacing them with effective young players would give repercussions down the line? Oh look, the Packers are finally starting to spend money on free agents. Look at who they got. Martellus Bennett? Ahmad Brooks? Jari Evans? What is this, 2012? To add insult to injury, you lose Micah Hyde to mediocrity, you lose Julius Peppers to mediocrity, you lose TJ Lane to a division of rival, and you lose JC Treader to a lol cow. How much more cheap can you get? And in typical fashion, Ted Thompson drafts players that don't fit their scheme and don't amount to anything. It's still early, but neither me nor Packer fans are optimistic anymore. Well, at least the realists aren't. When we look at all of this, let's take a look at what their roster might look like if they had made a few different moves. 
At quarterback, they have, of course, Aaron Rodgers. At running back, they have Ty Montgomery, Jeremy Hill, and Deion Lewis. At fullback, they have Aaron Ripkowski. At wide receiver, they have Jordy Nelson, Tyreek Hill, Randall Cobb, and John Brown. At tight end, they have Lance Kendricks and Richard Rodgers. At tackle, they have David Bakhtiari and Brian Bulaga. At guard, they have JC Treader and Jari Evans. At center, they have Corey Lindsley. At defensive end, they have Sylvester Williams and Mike Daniels. At nose tackle, they have Kenny Clark. At edge rusher, they have Nick Perry and Clay Matthews. At interior linebacker, they have Blake Martinez and Zach Brown. At cornerback, they have Casey Hayward, Devon House, and Kevin King. And at free safety, they have HaHa ha Clinton Dix to go along with Landon Collins at strong safety. There are probably multiple other possibilities, but this is a roster that I think is well assembled and could have happened if Ted Thompson knew what he was doing entirely. But missing out on talent isn't even the worst part because that happens a lot with multiple teams. The worst part is that the coaching staff cost the Packers from at least going to the Super Bowl in at least one other season. The lack of game planning abilities from Mike McCarthy and conservative defensive play calling from defensive coordinator Dom Capers is ultimately a big factor as to why the Packers didn't perform better in certain playoff games. Their 2010 Super Bowl run was made from a roster that had a couple of vets on the roster that were desperate for a Super Bowl victory and a supporting cast that Aaron Rodgers can only dream of having these days. Maybe you don't have to get rid of Ted Thompson necessarily, but it is time to clean house on that coaching staff. They are incompetents that have been carried by Aaron Rodgers making big plays in key moments and facing relatively easy schedules season after season after season and are unable to get the fullest out of players anymore, if that even is a word. It is time for a change in North Wisconsin. It is time for the Packers to become a dynasty. It is time for Aaron Rodgers to get another Super Bowl ring. Or things can remain the same and I can still listen to the frustration from Packer fans as they act like their fate in this millennium has been as bad as the Raiders fate in this millennium, which is a solid consolation.